Today we've uh, heard a lot of things about analysis done for various things like the earthquake. That, that really interests me because a lot of the things I've seen in the last year or so in this space have been about episodic things like that. Our company, what I want to talk to you about is what our company does. And what our company does is it kind of focuses on the long-term version of those kinds of things. So for example, you might want to track all the earthquakes that ever were and then have sensors in the, in the ocean and whatnot, in the ground and whatnot. And what you want to do is you want to track um, the earthquakes that are happening now and then correlate what's going on to the earthquakes that happened in the past. We call those big data applications. They're operational applications, a lot like you would have your point of sale applications, but obviously against a lot more data. So let me just go through the history of our company. Because a lot of people don't know who we are. Uh, we're actually a, a new big data company that's been around for 10 years. Starting in 2001, uh, two things happened. 9-11 happened, of course. Um, uh, but Mark Logic was founded. And the vision w that our founder, Chris Lindblad, had was uh, largely derived from a conversation he had with some customers. He was the architect of UltraSeq, which uh, was a big data application in its day, of course. And uh, big data being defined by, you know, they could index up to 100 gigabytes of, uh, of data and uh, provide uh, answers very quickly. What, um, what, what this person told him was, I really like the, the notion of freeform text, but what I really want is the ability to do um, queries against, against structured data as well in the same repository. I would pay a million dollars for that. That's pretty much the conversation they had, and as a result, he founded a company to do this. And uh, Chris is very excited about things that people want to pay money for. So now in 2003, uh, XML rocks the media publishing industry. So what that, what that really means is it kind of came along and was good for Mark Logic because what Chris decided was that XML was good for polystructured data of the kind that his, his data best friend asked for. You had structured, you had unstructured information, it was text, it was being wide, widely adopted across the industry as we all remember. And uh, he thought it was a good opportunity for Mark Logic to take a, to establish a beachhead there. And we did. In fact, um, we sold to almost every publisher on the planet. And uh, I would say we're probably number one in that industry. And largely because the data sets that those, those industries started creating became larger and larger and much too large for a lot of the content management systems that were out there. And they really did want a combination of databases and search. So that's what we built. Moving ahead to 2007, uh, we, our business continued to grow in that trajectory, largely selling to that base. But what happened was we started to get a lot more interest from various other industries, in particular the government. They started to get very smart about collecting information in large quantities uh, and across the different agencies. What they want to do is pull all that stuff together. And as you can imagine, all those, all those agencies kind of have their own formats and their own systems and their own infrastructures for doing these things. What they needed to do to bring this stuff together was something where you could take the data as is, dump it into one place, and the freeform query and the structural query that I talked about would just work. We, we had built that. And we had built it on uh, a shared nothing architecture where it scales out just by adding more nodes to your cluster. Uh, we did it where, you know, if you do something with a query, uh, it's actually doing so something a lot like MapReduce. This is just how you do things in this space. And uh, so it turned out to be re really good for this, for, this, for this application. And our government business grew like crazy. Now, now we're in the era of what we're calling the big data era. And all that really means is that there's now a name for this, what we do, and an industry around what we do in a genre. And um, so we're happy to play in this space. But it's interesting to look at this timeline because it's been 10 years we've been doing this. So, um, so we're happy to be here. Now, let me go through one more thing here. So in 2006, uh, Hadoop came out. And uh, this is the introduction of a MapReduce available to you and me to do, do things with. And uh, I was exposed to this at Autodesk. We were building a search engine for parts and 3D models. And what we needed to do was to enrich that data so that it was searchable. And we found Hadoop, and, uh, and we used it. And so I've been really interested to watch Hadoop become suddenly the infrastructure for a whole new industry. And that's exactly what's happened. So you have big data applications where you have any data, any volume, any structure. That's what we handle. You analyze all your transactions and interactions in detail and in real time. The real time part is important. A lot of these things where you, ask, you, you do some processing and ask a question, they're really interesting. But we're talking about, again, stuff that's running all the time, 24-7. Um, LexisNexis is an application built on our, te our technology, which is a good example of that. And of course, if it's real time, then you can ask questions really quickly. Now, the intelligence community has adopted our stuff on mass. And you can see that you, know, you need geospatial, you need comparison graphs, real time alerts, things like that. Our system does this stuff. It has to be real time. You can't do a bunch of batch processing and then wait for an answer. It has to be available all the time. 
Now, our customers want to use Hadoop because what, the, what, the, what we see happening is tape, tape archives are going away, and people want to store data in commodity storage and keep it around and have it available for sloshing back into uh, application systems like MarkLogic. And so we think Hadoop is really great for that. In fact, just by marrying MarkLogic and Hadoop, we've been able to cut our ingestion time in half for some of these large data sets. So we think it's really great. And so we decided that we're going to get really serious about it. What we're going to do is we're partnering with Hortonworks starting today. And we're going to create a, an architecture for doing exactly what I talk about, which is having an archive format, a storage system of choice, a single source of truth, and then an operational system to bring that data in and make it operational. So that's what we're really excited to talk about here. And that was the whole talk. Thank you very much.